Greetings fellow mathematicians, let's investigate the scope and sequence for the first year of school. Page 1 contains an overview of the concepts taught in the first year of school. A green arrow shows the links between essential related concepts. An orange arrow shows the essential prerequisite for further concepts. The concept name and level is the name and level used at a learning place, a teaching place. Number and algebra concepts are taught informally in the first year of school and at a learning place, a teaching place, these are called early counting and grouping. The abbreviated text identifies the Australian curriculum and New South Wales syllabus content descriptions. As you can see, the focus of number and algebra in Term 1 is counting. Students investigate conventions, including counting forwards and backwards by one, writing numerals correctly and recognising numerals. They use these conventions to develop their understanding of counting with one-to-one -one correspondence, explaining that the last number said is the total and that a number always represents the same amount. They use their understanding of counting forwards and backwards to explain that when we count forwards we are adding one each time and when we count backwards we are taking away one each time and the number after is one more and the number before is one fewer. Students also investigate supertizing. The focus of number and algebra in Term 2 is on grouping. Students develop their understanding of groups flexibly. They divide into equal groups and they make unequal groups. They explain that they started with one group and now they have more than one group. Students estimate the number in a group, identifying that numbers are inclusive. They identify the part that repeats in a pattern and use the part that repeats to identify errors. In Term 3, students use their understanding of counting and groups to investigate joining groups to add and taking away from a group. They investigate finding difference in two ways, friends of 10 and partitioning single digit numbers. In Term 4, they extend their understanding of teen numbers, explaining teen numbers as 10 and, partitioning teen numbers and investigating friends of 20. Children investigate the fraction a half, explaining it is half as big. They investigate and name shapes and objects and they investigate lines on two-dimensional shapes and three-dimensional objects and surfaces on three-dimensional objects. They describe length as length, height and distance and compare length, area, volume and capacity and mass informally. Pages 2 to 5 contain a term-by-term -term sequence of concepts taught in the first year of school. Each term presents essential prior concepts from the previous year and terms. Each term scope and sequence is divided into weeks, with essential prior concepts being taught first and essential related concepts being taught together. For example, counting forwards and backwards, writing numerals and recognising numerals are all taught in the same time frame. These are prior knowledge needed to count items and recognise that a number always represents the same amount. The weeks that new concepts are introduced are arbitrarily selected. Your teacher judgment will be vital to deciding when is an appropriate time for your students and how much time to spend continuing to investigate prior concepts. Some students may be ready to investigate new concepts before others. This will require differentiation. For example, you want to begin teaching counting items with one-to-one -one correspondence, but A. Three students cannot yet count forwards and backwards to ten. B. Six cannot yet write numerals correctly. And C. Five don't yet recognise numerals. All students can engage in the teaching segment of the lesson about counting items within the range they can count. During the investigation and reflection segment of the lesson, the A students count items within their range and also practice counting one further number. 
the B students count items within their range, recording only the numerals they can record and also practicing recording one further numeral. The C students count items within their range and also practice recognizing one further numeral. All students can engage in the explicit teaching segment of the lesson that includes these levels. What does differentiation using these sample levels of understanding look like? The explicit teaching segment of the lesson covers the levels of concepts that students will be investigating. Begin the explicit teaching using questioning at the lowest level of understanding, then proceeding through other levels. Using a different colour for each level allows students to identify and name their level by colour. For example, A, counting items within their range and practising counting one further number. B, counting items within their range, recording the numerals that they can and practising recording one further numeral. C, count items within their range and practise recording one further numeral and count items with one-to-one -one correspondence. This explicit teaching segment of the lesson literally takes 10 minutes. The bulk of the lesson time is spent with children investigating at just beyond their current level of understanding. What does differentiation using these sample levels of understanding look like in the investigation and reflection segment? Students do not need to sit with a teacher or another adult just because they are learning at a different pace. As long as they are investigating a concept at just beyond their current level of understanding, every child can investigate independently. All students can sit next to a child who is investigating at a different level. For example, A, counting items within their range and practicing counting one further number. B, counting items within their range, recording the numerals that they can and practicing recording one further numeral. C, count items within their range and practice recording one further numeral and count items with one-to-one -one correspondence. Children use cards to generate numbers to investigate at their level. They pause occasionally to explain their understanding to the child sitting next to them, regardless of that child's level of understanding. What does differentiation using these sample levels of understanding look like in problem solving? Children use their current understanding to investigate solving a problem. Problem solving provides opportunities for children to apply their developing understanding and further develops their understanding. Problems can be easily differentiated to suit the levels of understanding of your students. Children may be directed to the level of the problem to solve by the teacher or children could look at the levels of the problem and select the level that is at their current level of understanding. If one level of the problem is too easy, they look at the next level. If the next level is too easy, they look at the next level until they find and solve the problem at their current understanding. Observing and questioning children as they investigate, listening as they explain their understanding to a friend, and collecting books at the end of each lesson all provide immediate assessment data which can then be used to inform future teaching to meet the specific learning needs of the children. The children's talk, writing and actions all display their current level of understanding. Thus teaching and formative assessment are indivisible. But how do you initially know each child's current level of understanding? Check if each child has the understandings listed in the top part of the Term 1 scope and sequence. The following assessments could be used. As a subscriber to a Learning Place, a Teaching Place, you have automatic access to Primary Maths, where you will find questions similar to the questions above to assess student understanding across all concepts and all levels.